well, part two, um, foreign policy. Since, um, you know, most of the uh, U.S. population, um, and, and we're probably not alone in this, uh, but since most of the po U.S. population is completely ignorant about the U.S. foreign policy, um, basically all they listen to is CNN and the major networks, and that's where they get their news from. And so um, they believe it is somehow balanced and, uh, and objective, you know. Um, now, some of you may know that <laughs> by now that Fox News isn't exactly a news station, but let's leave that aside because that's too easy to discern that it's basically a joke. Now, the other networks, of course, are, are chiming in, and uh, sometimes you get a little glimpse, sometimes you don't. Most of the time, you have no idea at all. So... Um, there was a, an article on uh, uh, the Counterpunch website that i kind of like to share with you, um, several excerpts of it at least, written by Alexander Cockburn. And it's called, What is Really Going On in Libya? I'll try to post a link down in the description box to the entire article. It looks as though eastern Libya will slide into the Mediterranean under the sheer weight of western journalists assembled in Benghazi and Misrata. A tsunami of breathless reports suggests that Misrata is enduring travails not far short of the siege of Leningrad in World War II. The reports have been seized on by Obama, Cameron, and Sarkozy to raise the ante on Mission Odyssey Dawn. In their joint newspaper column published uh, both, uh, on both sides of the Atlantic, they now say that to leave Gaddafi in power would be an unconscionable betrayal and speak of Misrata as enduring a medieval siege. Not yet, surely. A medieval siege was something that usually lasted for at least a year, in which the city's inhabitants were reduced to eating rats, then each other, and then the besiegers all succumbed to the plague. It seems that the rebels in Libya might actually be under the overall supervision of the international banking industry rather than the oil majors. On March 19th, they announced the designation of the Central Bank of Benghazi as a, monet as a monetary authority competent in monetary policies in Libya and uh, a point of a governor of the Central Bank of Libya with a temporary headquarters in Benghazi. CNBC senior editor John Carney asked, Is this the first time a revolutionary group has created a central bank while it's still in the midst of fighting the entrenched political system? Ellen Brown wrote recently about the rebels' sophisticated financial operations in the following terms. According, according to a Russian article titled Bombing of Libya, Punishment for Gaddafi for His Attempt to Refuse the U.S. Dollar, Gaddafi made a similarly bold move. He initiated a movement to refuse the dollar and the euro and called on Arab and African nations to use a new currency instead, the gold dinar. Gaddafi suggested establishing a united African continent with its 200 million people using a single currency. During the past year, the idea was approved by many Arab countries and most African countries. The only opponents were the Republic of South Africa, 
and the head of the League of Arab States. The initiative was viewed negatively, of course, by the United States and the European Union, with French President Nicolas Sarkozy calling Libya a threat to the financial security of mankind. But Gaddafi was not swayed and continued his push for the creation of the United Africa. In an article, it gets better. In an article <clears throat> posted on the Market Oracle, Eric Aquino observed, one seldom mentioned fact by Western politicians and media pundits is this. The Central Bank of Libya is 100% state-owned. Currently, the Libyan government creates its own money, the Libyan dinar through the facilities of its own central bank, <laughs> basically can sustain itself. Few can argue that Libya is a sovereign nation with its own great resources and also to be able to sustain its own economic destiny. One major problem for the globalist banking cartels is that in order to do business with Libya, they must go through the Libyan Central Bank and its national currency, a place where they have absolutely zero dominion or power broking ability. Hence, taking down the Central Bank of Libya, which means taking down Gaddafi as well, may not appear in the speeches of Obama, Cameron, and Sarkozy, but this is certainly at the top of the globalist agenda for, absor uh, for absorbing Libya into its hive of compliant states. I'll post the link to that article. It's on Counterpunch. You know, if you if you log on to that website, because I can't, they don't provide direct links to the articles. You'll may have to scr scroll down to read the entire article, which is well worth reading. Good night.